Hello everyone, I am Miss Benita and I teach and live in Seattle, Washington. And like you, I'm at home right now. Uh, well, I'm at home right now with my family and my two cats. This is Claude and this is Claude. And we were thinking about you and my cats have been spending all their time doing just this, sitting around and relaxing. But then I thought, what can I do while I'm home? I really like to be outside and I like exploring outside and asking questions about the environment, looking at really cool things like, look at this, this is sea kelp attached to this rock. I wonder what happened here and how long it's been on the shore, things like that. So I thought it would be a good idea to share my love of the outdoors with you by showing you this unit. Yes, it is a fifth grade unit. And if we were in a classroom, fifth graders would be studying about ecosystems, but we're not in the classroom, we're at home. So all of you are invited to partake. So if you have siblings at home or you have fam other family members, please invite them to sit with you and watch these series of videos because you know we all know that learning is more fun when we learn from each other and when we learn with other people, right? So this video session is in two parts and uh, all you're gonna need is something to write with. I have my pencil right here and uh, a packet has been created for this lesson. And if you don't have the packet, you can just use any uh, paper that you have around your house, right? So we're gonna get started by taking a look at some photos and some photos that show examples of ecosystems. What do you know about ecosystems? You may already know a lot and some of you may not know a whole lot, but I am a person that really likes to look at words. So let's take a look at this word, eco and system. Now a system is made up of individual parts that when you bring them together to work together, make a whole. Now, you can think of that as a system. Individual pieces that when they're brought together, make a whole. And then you have the word eco, which uh, is from the Greek word house. Isn't that cool? So, we can think of ecosystems as places where animals and plants live together in their environment. There are many, <clears throat> excuse me, there are many different kinds of ecosystems <clears throat> and different types of living things live in different ecosystems. Let's think about a few examples. I'm gonna show you five examples of different ecosystems found around the world. And we're going to um, ask some questions and jot some things down. This is a rainforest in Border Ranges National Park in Australia. What living things do you think you would find in a rainforest ecosystem? Check out this really cool picture. What might those living things need to grow? Now, if you are watching this online, you can pause and jot down some of your ideas in your pamphlet, or you can talk to a family member about some of, the, some of these questions that you have. And if you're watching it on live TV, you can just follow along talking to the television. How many of you talk to the television? I know sometimes I do. Now, this is a desert in Signal Peak, Arizona. What living things do you think we would find in the desert ecosystem? And what might those living things need to grow? So do you see a pattern? I'm gonna be showing you an ecosystem. I'm gonna be asking you, what might those living things in that ecosystem, what might they need to grow? All right, a few more. This is a tundra near Bransfield Strait, Antarctica. What living things do you think we would find in a tundra ecosystem? And what might those living things need to grow? You, do you know some really cool things about Antarctica? I bet you do. Something like it's a continent and the only people that actually live there are scientists? That's way cool. This is the Savannah in the Serengeti National Park. And in the United States, we pronounce this word Tan Tanzania. 
but in Africa, they pronounce it Tanzania. What living things do you think we would find in a savanna ecosystem? What might those living things need to grow? Jot some ideas down, talk to someone about what your ideas are. This is a coral reef in the Red Sea near Egypt. What living things do you think we'd find in this coral reef ecosystem? And what might those living things need to grow? Now, we have talked about several different kinds of ecosystems. Do you have any new ideas about what an ecosystem is? Did a family member notice anything else uh, that you wanted to add to your packet of information? All right, now's the time to, to do that. Okay, so the bigger question that we're gonna be exploring in these series of videos is how do organisms in the ecosystem get the matter and energy they need to grow and thrive? Whoa, that's kind of a mouthful. And I don't want you to panic and run off and say, I can't do this because one of the cool things of the way teachers are teaching science now is that they take big ideas like this and break them down into smaller parts and you learn all the parts along the way. So don't sweat it if you don't know these words and no need to rush off and go look them up. No need to have an adult tell you everything they know because that's not the way we learn. So let's unpack this unit together and keep going, all right? There are some words we'll need to know along the way and when we do, uh, they'll be posted just like this. So here is our first vocabulary word, ecologist. A scientist who studies ecosystems. Now notice that this eco prefix has come up again. And remember that's Greek for home and it's the same in ecosystems. An ologist is a person who specializes in studying something. So a lot of scientists are ologists, like biologists, a chemist, oh, a chemist, yes. So uh, this is a really cool word. And scientists who study ecosystems are fondly known as ecologists. These are ecologists. Ecologists observe ecosystems and their parts in order to draw a conclusion. In this unit, we're gonna take on the role of an ecologist. That is so cool. Ecologists probably have one of the best jobs, especially if you like being outdoors. Being an ecologist might be something that you would be really good at and super interested in. So be thinking about, wow, I'm gonna be practicing being an ecologist while we go through these videos. I might, one, I might think about becoming an ecologist when I grow up. So while we're on to the second part of this video, so we're gonna be exploring a simulation. Now, simulations are computer programs, and ecologists and other scientists often make and use these simulations to study things they cannot measure directly. Okay. Throughout the unit, I will be demonstrating a sim, which is short for simulation, to help us figure out what an ecosystem is and what it needs in order to thrive. And thrive is to be healthy and happy. As I work through the sim, take notes of your observations. How does this sim work? How is this sim like an ecosystem? I'm gonna play this. I really like this idea that there's a video inside a video. Are you dancing? If you want to remove a living thing or organism from the ecosystem, select
So I'm gonna pause and go over to the sim. If you have access online, you can go to the sim as well. Just follow the directions in your pamphlet. Okay, so I'm gonna follow their instructions and I'm going to double the time here. And I'm gonna press play. So I'm gonna observe what's happening over here in the plants. And you can jot down some of your observations as well. So the video told me that this key up here is gonna be super helpful. And I can see that the sun is representing energy and there's energy going down to the plant and as the plant absorbs the energy and carbon dioxide it makes these building blocks and then as the building blocks grow i just saw some leaves move over to the rabbit did you all see that as well oh and i just saw some leaves fall down and then some building blocks come over here oh there we go the green ones that from the plant were taken up by the rabbits and then they went from green plant blocks to blue rabbit blocks. Okay, do you see that as well? This is pretty cool. This is a really neat simulation. Now I'm noticing also that the blocks that have fallen from the plant are moving over to the mushrooms and that the rabbits are moving over to the foxes and the foxes are taking up those blocks as well. So how is this like an ecosystem? Well, we know an ecosystem is a habitat that's made up of different parts of living things. So like the video suggested, I'm gonna take one of these parts of the ecosystem out. I'm gonna take the plants out. See what happens. Okay, the rabbits just had some some plants. Oh, what's going on with the rabbits? They're skinnier. They're not making any blocks. The rabbits may not, since they're skinny, they're not feeding the 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 wolves very well. Their blocks are falling and getting absorbed by the mushrooms. So it looks like now their blocks are just coming over to the mushrooms. And these both look pretty unhealthy, the rabbits and the foxes. Oh, they're wolves. I think of red when I think of foxes. Wow, a lot of them just fallen out. Oh, we've lost our wolves. So like an ecosystem, what can you summarize what's going on here? Okay, what did the sim exploration make you wonder about? Write down some of your wonderings and we'll see if we can answer some of these questions when we come back to this, these activities on the video. So we're gonna wrap this one up. What we've done today is we looked at different ecosystems and we saw a simulation that uh, modeled what happens in an ecosystem, how things uh, work together and what happens when you remove one of the pieces. We've learned that uh, ecologists or people that study different ecosystems. And so the next time I see you, we're gonna uh, take on a situation that uh, ecologists need to work on in the Costa Rican rainforest. Bye for now, take care.